Hey everybody, welcome back to Weld.com. So you may have recognized this space from previous episodes where we used to do all our CNC plasma cutting. Well, uh, we're doing some changes around the shop and look at all the space we have. A little fun fact about adulting kids, make sure you pay your bills on time, otherwise the repo man comes a knocking and it's not fun, especially around Christmas. So if you could do us a favor and swing by the old Weld.com website and pick up maybe a, a hoodie for that special someone in your life, maybe a shirt, some coupon slaps, uh, any, any other slaps that we have there, maybe a hat, a uh, welding jacket, we'd, we'd definitely appreciate it. We're operating on a shoestring budget here, and frankly, I think the welding machines are next. So if you guys want to continue this great content, please support us through the weld.com website. In all seriousness, uh, Kawiki's generously donated a brand new machine with a rotating pipe axis, so we had to take the old machine out of here to make room for the new machine. Um, but seriously, go buy a t-shirt, get yourself a hoodie. I mean, it's, it's chilly. Not here in Florida. I think we're hitting about 76 degrees today there, camera guy. I don't understand. It's like 74. 74, okay, I, I misspoke. It's uh, 70, 74 degrees, 76. It's, it's somewhere in the 70s, it's nice. All right, so let's get to it. So today we're gonna talk about some thin gauge TIG welding. So I have, uh, I have some 16 gauge carbon steel plates from Weld Metals Online. They, uh, they sent us a coupon pack a while ago. So we've been kind of going through the process doing those things. Uh, some people asked about doing a demo on some thin gauge stainless. We did uh, thin to thick in a previous video. This is just gonna be thin to thin. And what I'm gonna demonstrate today is something called the, um, the, the back step technique, okay? And I'll walk you through exactly what that is. I'm gonna go ahead and put several tacks down this piece real quick, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get to the education. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a couple of small tacks, probably an inch, inch and a half apart. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna assist with thin gauge material. Anytime you weld on that, heat's gonna move metal. It's gonna move it in the direction of the heat. So I'm going to put some little tacks down to prevent that heat from moving uh, any of my material, prevent it from warping. Warping. Prevent it from warping. Warping? Warping, that's a word. It's gotta be, look it up. Okay, so typically with a weld joint, I'm gonna weld from right to left as I'm going through this, right? And what that's gonna do is that's gonna push the heat right down the seam as you know the area that I'm going to weld. Now with the back step technique, I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. I'm still going to weld right to left, but I'm going to progressively move down the joint to the right hand side where the cooler material is. So I'm leaving all my heat behind instead of pushing it forward. And I'm just going to run tack to tack as I'm going through this. What that's going to do is going to prevent the material from warping as I go through. As I said before, if I weld from right hand all the way this way to the left, I'm just gonna be pushing that heat steadily down the joint. It's gonna to wanna to start separating. Yes, the tacks are gonna help, but I'm still gonna get a lot of warpage in there. By doing the, the, uh, the back step technique, I'm keeping all the heat away from me as I'm going through the joint. All right, so I should probably mention my setup before we get too far into this. The material that I'm welding on is 0 0.059, so I'm gonna be running about 59 amps. I'm just gonna round it up. I'm gonna run 60 amps. I have a 0.040 tungsten and I'm using uh, some 035 MIG wire that I actually clipped off one of our spools. So fun fact about MIG wire, it is the same thing as TIG wire. It's just different diameters and it comes on a spool instead of a 36 inch cut length. And I needed some 035 wire, something smaller for thin gauge material. That's what I used. I'm just gonna fire up on the tack again, get my puddle established, and then add filler metal. Just keep moving down the line. So again, I'm just gonna weld from right to left, moving back towards the area where I left. This side right here is pretty much cooled down as compared to as if I was to push it all the way down through the, uh, throughout the joint. And then just terminate right where I left off on the start of the previous weld. I got about six seconds of post flow, so I'll hold that right at the end. All right, y'all, so that concludes this period of instruction on the back step method. Make sure to stop by weld.com, pick you up a uh, hoodie, shirt, jacket. Uh, what else we got on there? Got some slaps on there. Bucket dippers. Bucket dippers. Hit up the bucket dippers. They're on sale, I believe. Until uh, next time, make every weld better than your last. Don't buy no bucket dippers because I got to paint them. <laughs>